is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV today. It is time to talk about, whoa, whoa, WrestleMania, WrestleMania 34 coming at us from the New Orleans Superdome, and we got 14 matchups to talk about, so let's waste no time right here and right now on the newest, fastest rising podcast in all of YouTube, baby, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Let's do it. <laughs> What's up, wrestling fans? Thank you so much for joining us here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show for your official WrestleMania 34 preview and predictions. My name is Nick Nightmare. Along with me, as always, is the world's greatest tag team, Thor, the wrestling god of thunder, and the world heavyweight champion of microphones, Blue the Snowball. Let's Get down to business. WrestleMania 34 is going to feature one of the biggest and actually most stacked cards in recent WrestleMania history. A lot of great matchups that have the potential to actually deliver us many true WrestleMania moments. There are also some train wrecks amongst the matchups that nobody wants to see, including the two Thanks for Coming Battle Royals. That's what I equate them to. You know when you used to play in Little League and you were on that scrub team that never won a dime and couldn't do anything and you had a 0 and 15 record of the whole year. You didn't make the playoffs, but you know you're a little kid and you don't want to feel like a loser. And what do they do nowadays? They give you that participation trophy, right? That's giving kids absolutely nothing to learn from, nothing to aspire for. Because even if I'm a piece of trash player and my team sucks, I'm going to get this trophy, right? So that's what these two trophies, the Andre the Giant and the Golden Uterus trophy, respectively, no disrespect intended to the eighth wonder of the world but it is what it is it's a thanks for coming thank you for your participation battle royal and both now for the women and the men they're unnecessary it's just to get everybody on the card and give everybody a little piece of the wrestlemania paycheck when the top talent that are delivering on the upper part of the card could get a nicer piece of the pie if all these people weren't dipping their hands in the cookie jar. Why am I talking about food so much? Maybe I'm a little bit hungry. I don't know. I had a nice big breakfast and I'm all fired up. Maybe I'm just trying to look for some cool analogies. But in any case, let's get down to this card. Let's start it off. Let's bring up the match card screen with the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, we all know this was relegated to the pre-show. There was no movement, which there should have been, to try to get this match elevated to the main card the effort that was put forth in the Cruiserweight Championship tournament that has been taking place on 205 Live over the last few weeks has gone to the wayside. It means absolutely nothing. Everything that they have done to resurrect the 205 Live show is seemingly unimportant to the WWE creative team as they don't care about Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali. They do not See this as a WrestleMania main card matchup, and that couldn't be further from the truth. If you gave these guys a good 20-minute matchup to start the show, it would kick that crowd off the way a WrestleMania crowd should get kicked off. Everybody would be hot, and it would be absolutely fantastic. We would crown a new Cruiserweight champion no matter who wins the match. It would be fantastic, but it's going to take place on the pre-show. Both of these guys had stellar outings in that tournament. Cedric Alexander, probably the rightful winner of the Cruiserweight Classic when it first took place based off of his popularity and his performances and what he has done since then seemingly has been nothing, but the fact that he has survived as one of the top stars in a division that was almost killed by Vince McMahon, he definitely deserves the opportunity to lead this brand. I think he definitely could. Mustafa Ali, on the other hand, kind of took me by surprise. I didn't expect much from him throughout the year, but he has risen 
more and more, especially since Triple H took over. It's been an absolute pleasure to watch this division over the last few weeks. This on the pre-show is a travesty, but it still is a match that could overtake the whole night. They can give you a match that WrestleMania has never seen before. And it's going to be fantastic. I'm thinking Cedric Alexander comes out on top in this one. Let's get to the next matchup. The Participation Awards. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Humongous Wonder number 8. Right, Matt Hardy, you crazy bastard? Yes. He's my pick to win this whole thing. There would be no reason not to. If this is the only thing you had for Matt Hardy and he is now on the cusp of getting the Woken universe really kicked off, you know, where I hope, you know, if creative don't fucking blow it like they blow everything else, but this would be a great place to relaunch the Woken thing without Bray Wyatt. Maybe Bray Wyatt shows up at WrestleMania and costs Matt Hardy the victory in this battle royal, and maybe it'll go to somebody else. You know who it's not going to go to? Baron Corbin. I'd put money on it. He's not going to be the first ever second time winner of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. The field of superstars they chose to put in this picture is interesting enough in and of itself. The Revival is claiming to be the first tag team that's going to win the Battle Royal. I do not want to see that happen. The Battle Royal cannot be won by a team. It's every man for himself. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mojo Rowley is worthless. Ty Dillinger, he's negative 10 right now. He's not the perfect 10 at all. He's been actively squashed by the WWE creative team because they don't want 10 chance in the crowd. That's what they're telling us. That's what I'm hearing. Why wouldn't you want the crowd to enjoy this man? Because... The 10 counts interrupt a referee's actual 10 count and you can't keep count when you're trying to count somebody out from ringside. So let's just kill this guy's momentum. He went through all this trouble building a character that got over like gangbusters and they're just putting their thumb on it and squashing the whole thing. My pick to win this thing is Matt Hardy. And if anybody else wins it outside of him, it's pretty much a failure in my eyes. Because nobody else is worthy of anything. Not that it's really going to mean anything. Because like I said, it's just thanks for coming. And for the ladies as well, thanks for coming ladies. Here's your golden uterus. Alright, this trophy is an atrocity. If you don't like the uterus analogy and you want something a little more clean, although we're not talking in a sexual tone, it is just basic biology. That's what it looks like with the ovaries and all. It can also be likened to a bikini. A little bikini strap. What else could it possibly look like? That does not look like a cup to me. Maybe a female cup. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Whoever wins this trophy should break it. Bad News Brown style. Maybe Sasha Banks wins this whole thing and just tears that trophy apart. Breaks it up. I don't need this piece of garbage. I'm better than this. I want the World Heavyweight Championship. The Women's Championship. You know, that would be kind of cool. You're not disrespecting anybody. It's not based off of Mula anymore. You didn't give it to Trish or anybody else that you could bestow the honor upon. Maybe make it feel meaningful in some way. No, you're giving us the golden privates. No thanks. Break that shit apart. Whoever wins it. Bailey. It's going to be one of those two. I would definitely give it to Sasha. And then, like I said, make her break that trophy into a bazillion pieces because that's what it truly deserves and then make something nicer you got a whole year design something better something a little more classy jesus christ let's stop wasting time on this useless battle royal let's get to the next matchup the united states championship fatal four-way which will be an absolute and complete failure if it does not end with the victory for Rusev Day. WrestleMania is taking place on Rusev Day and we should be celebrating Rusev Day in a big way by relaunching him with the United States Championship around that Bulgarian waist of his. When he was the United States Champion the first time, he definitely was a fantastic champion. He was in his heel run. He was the Bulgarian brute. He wasn't this charming happy-go-lucky kind of 
every man Rusev that we are enjoying right now in this Rusev day. And this would be a great thing, not only for Rusev, but for the United States Championship. It would finally be on the waist of somebody that's making it feel important. Because the crowd love Rusev. And they will put that much emotion into every single United States matchup when he's defending it. They will not want him to lose. The United States Championship is going to get over just on the back of Rusev Day. So they would be fools to not make this move right here and right now. I just heard, I was unaware of this over the last few weeks, but I just heard after listening to all of my guys that I get my news from, that Rusev asked for his release a few weeks ago. Prior to WrestleMania, Rusev wanted to leave. He didn't even care anymore. He knew he was going to end up in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And he was like, screw this, man. Every day is Rusev Day. You guys don't want to celebrate. I'm going to go somewhere that appreciates my holiday. And he wanted to go away. And kudos to him for finally taking a stand. And now look what has happened since then. In the last few weeks, Rusev has done nothing but win. And he was inserted into this United States Championship title match. There is no other reason to put him in here unless you wanted to get him that belt and finally give him his day and give Rusev Day a WrestleMania moment and allow it to explode ten times bigger than it already is. He is the second most popular guy on the show, only second to Daniel Bryan among his return, even prior to his return. Daniel Bryan was over more than half the roster just as the general manager. So he's number one. Rusev Day is easily number two, if not flip-flopped at times. Rusev Day, United States Championship victory needs to happen. Do you want to see Randy Orton still with this title? He added it to his collection. You could put it to your accolades. Get it out of here. I want to see you wrapped up in an accolade by Rusev. And tapping out and giving him the belt. Jinder Mahal, self-explanatory. Sure, he would have been a great United States champion a year ago. Year and a half ago. Instead, you gave him the WWE Championship. Made SmackDown garbage. Made him even more garbage. Because he wasn't worthy of it. He couldn't deliver on it. And it was an epic failure. Do you want to see him now? You want to see him even less now than you wanted to see him last year. Garbage. Who wants that? And Bobby Roode is just a waste right now. Until Bobby Roode gets his balls back and starts smacking kids and and threatening families and doing the Bobby Roode thing that he's supposed to do, he is inconsequential to me. He's just in here to give Bobby Roode his match at WrestleMania and not put him in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. He was the United States Champion. They shouldn't have taken it off him. They should have just left him the United States Champion because giving it to Randy Orton, you're doing the same thing. You gave it to a babyface that's supposed to be a heel that comes off as ingenuine and you don't want to see it because it's stale and boring. He knows it. Look at his face in this picture. Even Randy Orton knows it. Look at that face. He knows this is garbage. Look at his face. Nobody wants to look at that. It's disgusting. Rusev Day. United States Championship. Let's hope. We can only hope. Keep it moving. The next mid-card title, the Intercontinental Championship Triple Threat Match. This is probably my favorite to be the match of the night. It's not expected to be. I know that we are looking at three high-quality wrestlers, and based off of what we've been seeing on Monday Night Raw week after week, we've pretty much already seen everything we are going to see in this matchup. So, I expect them to raise the bar higher than Sheamus and Cesaro ever could, And this is going to be a very worthy Intercontinental Championship matchup. Finn Balor, I'm hoping, wins this championship and then makes the heel turn that we're all expecting. Making the Balor Club something that is not just a t-shirt to buy. Give him Gallows and Anderson and make them a formidable team. Do something better than have him come around and smiling and and just being Finn Balor. By the way, what, what is with that picture? Did he swallow a fucking chicken bone? Look at the picture of Finn Balor. What's wrong with his neck? What is happening there? That is some terrible editing in Photoshop. Why is it... Why is that like that? Does his neck look like that for real? And now I gotta look. I don't think so. Oh my god. What are the two gigantic bulbous things on the sides of his... of his jaws there. Am I crazy? Do, do you guys see that? Let me know if you see that. That's that's disgusting. 
How does he look so... Never mind. Let's move along. Finn Balor is my choice to win this match. Chicken bone in his neck or not. And that's the bottom line because this late jam has said so. Seth Rollins probably is going to be inserted into the main event uh, at some point this year. Or he's going to continue to feud with Rollins, uh, with uh, Balor rather, which means that either Balor or Rollins needs to turn heel. You can't have two baby faces going at it for the Intercontinental Championship while The Miz maybe goes off to play daddy for a little while or ends up going to SmackDown Live where they could start to build his feud back with Daniel Bryan, which would be fantastic, but we'll talk about that at a later date. We don't want to derail this too much. Finn Balor's going to win this, in my opinion. Where they go with it, we don't know. Hopefully that is what happens because I don't want to see The Miz with the belt anymore. He's done enough damage to it. And even Seth Rollins at this point, to me, he just feels like he doesn't need the Intercontinental Champion. He, he, he was the WWE Champion. You know, that's what he should be aspiring to get his hands on. Now, I know the Intercontinental Championship is a much beloved championship to all of us and to all of the performers on the main roster. So holding it is prestigious in its own right. I just feel like Rollins is a little bit above carrying that belt for a long term. And unless he wins it and then loses it the next night to Finn Balor on Monday Night Raw, but why wouldn't they want to finally give Finn a nice WrestleMania moment? Rollins has had a few already. Probably one of the biggest moments of all time at WrestleMania 31. Saving the main event for this guy. But uh, but that's it. Like I said, let's move along because we got 14 matches to go. I could sit here and talk about this one all night long. It's going to be a great match. Finn Balor is going to win. And then we are going to take a look at this triple threat matchup for the Tag Team Championships of SmackDown Live. The single greatest tag team on the WWE roster consistently for possibly the last decade. I don't care that the New Day are the longest reigning or had it for however many days. Since the Usos have been in the WWE, they have been one of the best tag teams ever. Exclamation point placed on it this year with the birth of the Uso Penitentiary and the feud with the New Day absolutely taking them to new heights. And every single match you see with the Usos is a show-stealing, eye-opening matchup that you hope to see more and more of as time goes on. Now, the inclusion of the New Day in this is absolutely fine with me. They have been their perfect opponents throughout the year. If this is going to be some sort of a blow-off in any way, this is the time to do it. I know we've seen the Usos and the New Day a million times. Which is why I fully welcome the arrival and the ascension, if you will, of the Bludgeon Brothers. They are the wild card in this situation. I was expecting this match to have some sort of a stipulation adding to it, like a tables scenario, a TLC stipulation, or as many people were assuming, a ladder match for the Tag Team Championships. All of those would have been much, much welcome at least in my opinion, for this match, it would have added a whole lot more to it and differentiated it even just slightly from the Intercontinental Triple Threat match that we are already going to have at Multi-Man Mania going on because every single match is seemingly stacked with talent. And I would not be surprised for one split second if this night is the night we see the crowning of the Bludgeon Brothers as the new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. Now, I would not be opposed to the Usos retaining. I would kind of be opposed to the New Day winning once again. I don't care how many times they've been champions. I don't care how long they've been champions. I don't want to see them as champions anymore. In fact, I would like to see them start to go away from the tag team division and still be the New Day, but start to compete in singles competition and maybe don't bring your friends around all the time. And you could still be the New Day. You know, like how DX was DX. They didn't always have to wrestle in a tag team match. Sure, you had the Outlaws do their thing, but then you had X-Pac having his singles matches, Triple H was having his singles matches, and then you have a whole plethora of stories you can tell by splitting these guys off in their own unique directions while still maintaining them as a faction of the New Day because they don't need to be separated as a group. They just need to start doing some matches on their own, and I think they could maintain their freshness, make it feel new again. Everybody's over 
on their own merit in the New Day, it would definitely work. The Usos and the Bludgeon Brothers could be the tag team feud for 2019. Allow that to be the main attraction. And maybe we have the Authors of Pain come to SmackDown Live. Would you like to see the Bludgeon Brothers versus the Authors of Pain? I certainly would. That Just take my money right now. That would be an absolutely brutal physical match that would be very hard to top. So I would definitely love to see that one. But my call for this one is the Bludgeon Brothers. They are probably going to be the new SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions. The Raw Tag Team Championship. This is another match that is very hard to call because we do not know what the X Factor of the mystery partner is. The speculation has gone so crazy on this particular matchup. The partner has been... Rumored to be guys like Rey Mysterio or um, even, what the hell is his name, Chin the Chinless Wonder. I forgot his name all of a sudden. It just dropped my mind. Who cares? He's not worth remembering. Ellsworth! James Ellsworth has been rumored to be his... Why? Why? You have a perfectly good roster of superstars that you could literally pick anybody to insert there over those names that I've already mentioned. I have said on my show that Neville would be a great addition as a tag team. Nobody's been talking about it. That would be an epic moment for WrestleMania. Have him come back and win the titles with Braun Strowman, and then that team could disintegrate from within, and you could get some great matches out of those two. Neville is fantastic, and his his selling and his performance would complement a giant like Braun Strowman. It would just be absolutely great. So I'm hoping for that. I was also thinking off the cuff the other night, and I thought maybe under the radar they could bring in Big Cass in this scenario. Have two big giant men, the two tallest men on the roster besides the Big Show, who's a heavy favorite for this as well. If the Big Show comes out during this matchup, I am going to go inside and throw up. Because I do not want to see that Not even for a microsecond. Don't even tease it. Don't even have him come out and then make somebody come out and jump him on the ramp. I don't want to be brought down on this WrestleMania night. There's already moments where I know I'm going to be brought down. Don't make this one of them. Make this be Neville. I would accept Big Cass. That would maybe get over a little bigger. He's never had his moment. They would probably compliment each other as a team. You got the big buff seven-footer and then the more lean, more you know, athletic seven-footer. We've never seen a tag team like that, not since the Brothers of Destruction anyway, and I think that would be cool. But the coolest of the cool would be Samoa Joe. He fits the profile perfectly. He can absolutely destroy the bar very easily with Braun Strowman. That is a team that you could not beat. They would be unbeatable. And just like I said with Neville, they would destruct from within. And then you could have Strowman and Joe for a short segment throughout this year, building up to one of them, elevating to a Universal Championship run. It's perfect. It writes itself. All the stars and the moons are aligned for this to actually happen for Samoa Joe. He is my heavy favorite. As fun as Neville or Big Cass would be, or as big and surprising as that would be, I want it to be Samoa Joe. Everybody wants it to be Samoa Joe. The only other possible scenario outside of the names that we have already said is Elias. Elias has nothing going on for WrestleMania right now as far as we know. There are rumors that he's going to have a a live concert performance that's going to be interrupted by somebody. It might be interrupted by Kid Rock leading to the entrance of The Undertaker. He might be interrupted by The Rock who will come out with his guitar and maybe do sing along with The Rock as well as walk with Elias simultaneously. That would be friggin' cool. I would like that. That would, uh, As long as it don't take up way too much time and, and start to suck. I think these two guys would be great face-to-face. Two absolute talented people on the mic. The guitars probably would end up getting broken, which is always a soft spot. I, I, get, I get very depressed when a guitar gets broken. It doesn't matter. But <laughs> I would like to see that. There are rumors that Double J... Jeff Jarrett might come out and interrupt Elias, and that might do something. I I don't know. I don't know. I would rather see him do any of those things than be in this tag team matchup with Braun Strowman. The teaming doesn't make sense. They have been fighting each other as of late. I don't think... I don't think I would like it. As much as I love Elias and I love Braun Strowman in their own separate entities, as a team, that's, that's not something that appeals to me. Samoa Joe is the prime 
candidate for this. And if it doesn't happen, and it's not one of the other two surprises, like I said, Neville or a big cast, who cares, really? <laughs> it just becomes a garbage match. Especially if it's the big show. God help us if that's the well that they decide to pull the water from, because we're all going to choke on it. No thanks. Just like we might want to choke on this one. This match is the only match on Raw outside of the Universal Championship that has featured any sort of a build whatsoever, and it's been nauseating. Everything that happened on the go-home show between Ronda Rousey and Stephanie McMahon, and having Ronda Rousey put through a table by a corporate executive after she clearly was able to see her coming, and just a couple of weeks prior, this same girl that Stephanie McMahon so easily vanquished, judo flipped a 300-pound game, Triple H, through a table very similar to what happened to her last week. And you want me to believe that she didn't see Stephanie coming? And even if Stephanie got her hands on her, her instinct isn't to flip people? Isn't to wrap somebody up? Somebody just grab me. What's your instinct? Somebody touches me, I don't turn around like, hey, who's that? I turn around with intent, like, who the hell is touching me? Time to drop the hammer. No, she just stood there and took one of the worst choke slams I've ever seen and then barely sold it and just stood there looking up. Now, I don't mind that she barely sold it because it came from Stephanie McMahon. How strong is Stephanie McMahon supposed to really be? This is a UFC champion we're talking about. She takes right hands and eats them for breakfast. Uppercuts are nothing for her. Elbows and things like that. She withstands these type of things on a daily basis throughout her life. You want me to believe Stephanie McMahon is going to incapacitate her? No. So her sitting there looking up at Stephanie should have been her angrily looking up at her and not like, oh my goodness, and then I'm going to get you, but I'm kind of scared because you threw me through a table. No. She should have got up and Ronda rowdied her ass. But she didn't. And this mixed tag team matchup, if it does not end in a victory for Rousey, it's a failure. Why would you want to put these two over one of the biggest signings and biggest stars ever. You're not going to to bring along this story. It's not compelling and nobody wants to see this Stephanie and Ronda thing go any further than WrestleMania. We already know it's going to happen because Stephanie's the authority and Ronda's going to be built as a female Stone Cold. Right? She's going to be anti-Stephanie. She's going to buck the authority. And she's not going to take any shift from them. And they're not going to like that very much, are they? So they're going to be the antithesis of Ronda Rousey's existence. I don't even want to see that. I'd rather just see her used as a talent and placed in matches on her march to next year's WrestleMania, where we all know she will most likely be tangling with Asuka. But as for this WrestleMania, I am looking forward in a, in a small sense to seeing Triple H and Kurt Angle back in the ring. Hopefully his in-ring abilities are better than his microphone abilities since his return to the WWE. I don't know what's up with Kurt Angle. Maybe he's uh, his brain's not as good as he thought. It might not be damaged, but it definitely ain't working in full capacity. His intelligence is not working at 100% anymore. Or maybe it's just his nerves. Maybe he's just a really nervous guy now. And he needs to relax because you're Kurt Angle. And I know you're trying to read scripted garbage... But I'm pretty sure you could do a better job than that. And I'm hoping that at least in the ring, he hasn't lost his touch. And we will see some nice stuff between two former rivals that have a long-standing history with one another. Because I could really care less about what's going on with the ladies in this scenario. That's just me. Let's move on to more ladies that we don't care about. In a matchup that should not be taking place for WrestleMania. That was built on a whim very quickly, and based off of fat jokes and mean girls high school bullshit drama. Nobody has once mentioned the women's championship. Not Nia Jax, not Alexa Bliss. All they're doing is taking shots at one another, dropping the B word. Mo, Nia said, bitch, bro, this must be serious. Out of here with that. No thank you. I'm done with that. This feud and this build has been an embarrassment. 
First of all, Nia Jax should not have had to be subjugated to the comments and things of the nature that they were making Alexa Bliss saying. This is something she deals with on a daily basis from the thousands of dumbasses on social media that don't have anything better to do with their time than to knock down somebody that's doing a whole lot better than they are in life. Obviously, she's comfortable in her own skin enough to be on national television on a weekly basis. And Alexa Bliss, who has her own body issues, she was anorexic, she has a weight issue of her own in her past, she knows how sensitive and how, how bad this issue really is. You're not bringing light to a situation, you're not trying to bring awareness to any big cause, you're coming off as a bitch. Oh, I just said it! Oh, does that make it intense? No! It doesn't. You want to talk about Nia Jax's blubber? Fifth grade insults! Ridiculousness! Unnecessary. The Raw Women's Championship feud is nestled in the Participation Trophy Battle Royal, which is Sasha Banks and Bailey. And that might not be a popular opinion amongst some of you, but it is an unmitigated fact that the two girls that... Really, when you go back to the beginning, the whole women's revolution, evolution, all is based off of what is now considered the greatest women's match that the WWE has ever seen when Sasha and Bailey went at it at NXT for the Women's Championship. And then the iron match that followed was not as good as their initial encounter. No, it was not. But it still was good enough to cement them as two of the premier talents on the roster. You don't want to call them the best because we got Asuka and Charlotte and all these people and maybe those are your favorites and it tickles you the wrong way when I bring you the truth and bring the hammer down on the fact that Sasha Banks is the best in-ring performer right now consistently over the last two years. Don't give me this shit that she hurt people. Everybody hurts people. There's a risk that you take when you're a professional wrestler. It's not her fault that certain things happen to certain people. Accidents happen. Get the fuck over it. She is the best in the ring. She tells a great story in the ring. On the mic, she's kind of trash right now. And her pronunciation of some words... Leaves a lot to be desired. But when she's going up against Bailey, who is her Batman. If she's the Joker, Bailey is Batman. They complement each other perfectly. And the feud and the matches we had in NXT make this match look like the trash that it is. Built on nothing. Nobody cares about the championship. And that's a goddamn shame. Nia Jax is going to win this. There's no reason for her not to. She's going to get her revenge. And they're going to give her something to be proud of. And she's going to cry in the ring. I can't believe I did this. This is my moment. This is Nia Jax. Who should be tearing heads off. Taking title belts and being like, yeah, this is mine. Deal with it. Shouldn't be crying and appealing to the little girls, the little chubby girl in the ring that needs a role model. You could be a role model that way and teach her to kick people right in the teeth when they're treating her like shit. And don't worry about what anybody says. Alexa's comments should be rolling off of her back, not making her sit there and cry. You think I give a shit what this little turd says? I'm going to step on her. I'm going to tear her in two. She should be fearing for her life right now. She should know better than to talk trash to me because I'm going to pull her intestines out through her throat. This is, this is Nia Jax. She's a big woman. You can't get around that. And that is what sells it. Her package is perfect. Just like an awesome con. You're going to have awesome con come to the WWE and then sit there crying because she was picked on as a little girl. Next. This is trash. Nia Jax. Needs a new gimmick. This is more like it. A dream match in the women's division, which is something we don't really say that often, and a match that has not been built properly and have not has not been given the proper attention on the road to WrestleMania because we have the SmackDown Live Women's Champion Charlotte putting up her championship against the streak, the new streak for WrestleMania, which is Asuka's undefeated streak since she's come to NXT. It's absolutely the most compelling women's match on the card. This 
actually has the potential to steal the night from everybody. This could actually be a main event for WrestleMania. It is definitely the main event as far as the women's division is concerned. But if you want to talk main events, you could definitely make this number three. Right below the two other matches. I would actually make it number two. My number one was Shinsuke and AJ, and then this is easily the second most anticipated match for me on this night. Charlotte Flair puts her lineage and her legacy on the line against the new hot name in the industry, the undefeated, the undefeatable Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. This match is going to be great. There are a lot of people that are split on who is going to win this match. I am not. I am firmly a believer and I am in the camp that Asuka is going to start her first ever Women's Championship run at this WrestleMania. Then she will be part of SmackDown Live and we are going to get to see some great first ever matchups like Asuka versus Naomi, Asuka versus Becky Lynch. Maybe we'll have a shakeup and we'll get more girls. Maybe they'll unify the women's division. Hopefully, I doubt it, but you never know. We could dream, right? We got this match, the best women's match they've put together all year long. And I can't wait. Asuka is going to win. Charlotte Flair is going to put on a fantastic performance. I don't want to see her do her moonsaults. I want to see her wrestle like her dad. She doesn't do certain things well. She herself is a big girl in her own way. She's tall and long and lanky and taking diving spots and doing all this athletic stuff off the top rope, especially to the outside with that moonsault. It just makes me cringe every time. Not because of how bad it looks, but because of how the landing just might turn out. And it's just not a thing of beauty, really. It's Sometimes it is when she does it to the inside of the ring. Outside of the ring, it's, it's an atrocity. And it's terrifying to watch. And I don't want to see that spot. It's not one of my favorite things she does. Everything else is absolutely fine, and it's going to be a fucking great match. Asuka's first WrestleMania is going to be an absolute moment to remember as she's crowned your new SmackDown Live Women's Champion. If Charlotte wins, I will be shocked. I will legit be shocked. And then they'll probably have the rematch at SummerSlam where Asuka will take it. But but everything is set so perfectly. Why would they do that now? Why would they blemish her record now? For the sake of Charlotte Flair? It's a little bit backwards booking if you ask me. Next matchup... The matchup nobody wants to see. The matchup Dana White apparently has already ruined by confirming Brock Lesnar's departure and entry into the UFC when WrestleMania is over. Everybody wants to get all up in a tizzy and say, Oh my God, Dana White, he ruined WrestleMania. Are you a retard? He didn't ruin anything. He's reporting on the inevitable. There's no surprise element to this match. We all know what's going to happen. It's going to be about 100 Superman punches that Brock's going to get up from every single one of them and he's going to hit a spear and the match is going to be over. Roman's going to take the belt. Brock's going to go away for a while. We all know this. We've known this since WrestleMania 33 concluded last year. There was nowhere else for them to go. We are having a repeat from WrestleMania 31, only this time there is no money in the bank for the men to save this. We all know what's going to happen. We're not even going to waste any more time on this. Because it's an inevitability. It's something we've already known. Why are you upset? Don't be upset. You can't get this upset over something you've known is coming. If somebody you know told you they're going to kick your ass when you were back in school, right? And you were getting picked on by the bully. Three o'clock, I'm going to get you when school's out. You know, you, you can't be mad at three o'clock when three o'clock comes. <laughs> you knew it was going to happen. You took no steps to change anything. You didn't try to make it right. You didn't try to make up with anything. You just let 3 o'clock come. The school bell rings and now we're all going to get punched in the face. And go home with a big black shine to the mom. How you doing? Thank you, Roman Reigns. Alright? We all know how this match is ending up. This match, however, I am a little bit torn on. Everything says that Shinsuke Nakamura is going to win this dream match. But... The WWE is the WWE, and they just might give this match to AJ and start off a series of matchups that will end with Nakamura finally besting the Phenomenal One 
but I don't really see that happening. It is definitely a possibility. I am in the corner of Nakamura. Now, it's not saying I don't like AJ. I love AJ. He is absolutely my favorite guy right now. He's the phenomenal one. He is the best wrestler or one of the top three, at least, best wrestlers in the world with Kenny Omega and Shinsuke Nakamura. But this is Nakamura's night. This is his moment. They've built it terribly. They've featured nothing that would make you feel like this title match is special. They did not feature much about their past histories in New Japan. Just saying the word the Tokyo Dome one time doesn't encompass everything that they have done before the WWE. Oh, this ain't the Tokyo Dome. No, it's not the Tokyo Dome. It's WrestleMania. Why don't you tell us a little bit more, a little bit more about what happened at the Tokyo Dome? What happened at the Tokyo Dome? Why is that so important? Why does that statement even mean anything? We wouldn't know because they didn't tell us about it. We didn't get a contract signing. Every big-time championship match usually has a, a contract signing mediated by the general manager or somebody. How did this not happen? How did we not see them sign the contract? They didn't have a photo shoot or a face-to-face or a weigh-in or any of these things that they could have done to really make this feel like a championship title fight that means something that's really about the championship and what it truly means for both of these guys to be in there with each other. We have not been let in on why this is so special to both of them. We, we got more of this high school bullshit. Shinsuke's Poking at AJ, playing mind games, right? And then AJ's going to play mind games back. This shit that we got for the last four weeks is what we should have been getting immediately following the Royal Rumble. And then the match should have been made, and now we should have been building it up and highlighting it as a championship match. Neither one of these guys should have been in the ring all month long. We should have been seeing interview segments promo packages, and then, like I said, you have all of those entertainment-driven segments you could have pulled out of the bag from the from the contract signing all the way to a weigh-in to, to build the story and tell it properly. Instead, we're getting them put in tag team matches. Can they coexist? Why the fuck would they need to coexist? They are opponents in the main event of WrestleMania for the biggest prize in the game. Are you stupid? It's been a terrible build. But it is still what it is. This is our main event. This is not their main event. They don't care about it, so they didn't give it the care that they gave to Roman and Brock. They didn't give it all the segments and all the build that they gave to Roman and Brock. They just let it be. They knew we wanted to see it. They didn't need to build it. So they just let shit happen. Ah, they phoned it in. But the matchup itself should turn out to be... Everything that we are expecting. I am very afraid that the WWE is going to open the show with this match. And only give them about 12 minutes. And that's not what we're looking for. You need to let everybody wait the whole night. And get to this match. And then give them 30 minutes at the end of the show. To kill it. And bring the house down. And end this night with Shinsuke Nakamura. Raising the heavyweight championship over his head. That's what I would do. That's what they should do. Shinsuke Nakamura is my pick for your winner of this match. The special attraction tag team matchup, which will feature the return of the Daniel Bryan and his Yes movement. I don't know why I said the Daniel Bryan, but yes, we will take it. And we are happy that he is going to be back in the ring, as is everybody all across the world Just like his tag team partner is happy to be back, there has been so much speculation about Shane McMahon, whether his health is up to par, whether he will be taking part in this match one way or the other, but here it is. Here's the graphic. It's been built. It's been announced just on the go-home show. They hugged it out. These guys got no beef with one another anymore, or do they? Hmm, because that is the hot topic on the week as it pertains to this matchup. Is Shane McMahon going to turn on Daniel Bryan and be um, alongside Owens and Zayn this whole entire time. That, I think, is the moment everybody is waiting for. If that doesn't happen, I think we will still get a very entertaining match. And regardless, we're getting the return of Daniel Bryan. And in his first match back, he's going to be across the ring from Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. 
I've wanted to see Daniel Bryan fight Sami Zayn since I've seen Sami Zayn and Cesaro back in NXT. I just think that is a matchup, especially with the way Sami Zayn has just been killing it as the little cocky prick that he has been, just nipping at everybody's heels alongside his big dog buddy. I love this version of Sami Zayn. And playing against Daniel Bryan, they almost look like a mirror image of one another. Like Daniel Bryan is the angel and Sami Zayn is the devil version of the same person. Because essentially they're both good guys, but Sammy sees things one way, Daniel sees things another. They are a lot alike, and their wrestling against one another will be great. Just like I've wanted to see Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan for the longest time. And I'm sure these guys all being friends, they have been longing to be in the ring with one another to tell a great tale. And having it be such a great moment like the return of Daniel Bryan is what's going to make it even more special for them as friends. But what's going to make it special for us is, like I said, if in the end, Shane McMahon does something to ruin the return of Daniel Bryan might be the start of something really great for 2018 into 2019 going into the new year of wrestling. So I'm thinking that Owens and Zayn are going to win this match. You don't think Daniel Bryan's going to lose on his return, right? But what greater way to get heat for Shane McMahon than to have him being playing Daniel Bryan all along and be on the side of these two guys. Absolutely fantastic. That's what my hope is. And now, to the match that all of you clowns without a brain think isn't going to happen. John Cena versus The Undertaker, which is going to be probably one of the mark-out moments of the night for most of us. John Cena is going to be at WrestleMania as a fan. Here is my prediction as to how The Undertaker will return. Whether or not it has something to do with Elias, I definitely hope not. But I think at some point, we are just going to have a Kid Rock segment, right? For the Hall of Fame. Maybe after they announce the Hall of Fame entrance for this year, like they do every year, and they bring them out on stage. The other ones will go into the back, and then Kid Rock will have a special performance. He'll play some weird song, right? Maybe that New Orleans song. I got new, I'm going down to New Orleans. I, I fucking hate it, right? <laughs> gonna probably play that, and then just drop out, and then go into the American Badass song. We're gonna hear the sad but true riff that Metallica wrote, and he's gonna start singing, they call me cowboy, and then the motorcycle will fucking rev, and the Undertaker will come out, and everybody's gonna get all goose bumpy and whatever, and then he's gonna go after John Cena in the crowd. Or maybe, <laughs> I mean, that that's beautiful, like how I just told it to you. That would be fucking fantastic, because even if as soon as Kid Rock takes the mic, everybody's gonna assume... He's going to be playing The Undertaker's entrance. So the best way to swerve everybody is have him singing Not in New Orleans. Right? <laughs> as much as we all hate it. And then just drop it in the middle and then go into it. And then John Cena, maybe you cut to him in the crowd all excited. Oh my God, The Undertaker's here. And he'll spill his beer on the fan next to him. And he'll get, and The Undertaker will get into the ring and start cutting a promo on him. Leading to the match that will end the night most likely. Unless they do it right in the middle of the card. Like I said, I don't see any other way to do it unless they just decide to just dong the bell and just gong and then play the song even though the guy that wrote and can perform the song is singing in the back. <clears throat> I think that would be a great way for The Undertaker to go out to the live performance entrance on, the, on his motorcycle getting the win over John Cena. John Cena should know as a wrestling fan that that is the right thing to do in this case. If The Undertaker has not been treated like a piece of trash over the last few WrestleManias and didn't lose twice already, then maybe I could say John Cena will beat The Undertaker and he could ride off into the sunset doing what's best for business and putting over the next big guy. But what's supposed to happen here, at least in my opinion, John Cena should be big enough to know his character does not need to beat The Undertaker, but if he was... The Undertaker's final opponent and the last man The Undertaker ever beat at WrestleMania would lead mo lend more to his legacy than a win in this scenario. His name would go down in the history books as such. Not as just another man that beat The Undertaker, 
but as the last man to go down in defeat to The Undertaker at WrestleMania. In New Orleans, at the site of the original incursion that where the streak was broken, and now he will have his vengeance and can get some retribution right on the same site where he lost to the Beast just four years ago. Undertaker's got to win here. He has to win here. And if he doesn't, this hammer will be coming down Sunday night at the conclusion of WrestleMania 34, live from the New Orleans Superdome this Sunday. Woo! That was a lot, man. That was 14 fucking matchups that I just gave you the ins and outs and everything that I feel about how it's going to go down. You got my predictions. If you wrote them down and want to keep score, that's fine. If you forgot to do so, you can go back and watch this video again and write them all down and then keep track. And then you can get at me when I was wrong for about half of the card if that's possible. But it's not because I know what I'm talking about as we are one of the best channels for professional wrestling on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure that you smash that thumbs up and let me know that you did enjoy. So if you didn't enjoy it, hit the thumbs down as well. But if you're still here after all this time, after talking about 14 friggin' matchups, I know you had a good time and you enjoyed yourself. Smash that thumbs up. Let the world know that we're doing a good job. Make sure you join the Sledgehammer Club today. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you will never miss a video because every time a video just like this one drops, that notification bell makes sure that you know that we are there and it will ding off in your pocket, on your laptop, on your smart TV, wherever it is that you watch your YouTube and you get your Sledgehammer fix on, they will notify you that a new and awesome video just like this one is there for your viewing pleasure. And then after you watch it, make sure you share this and everything that you watch on this channel with every wrestling friend that you have so that they can become a part of the hundreds of people that have come to this channel and watched me bring the hammer down with truth and justice and some of the most entertaining stuff you are going to see on YouTube today. The newest, fastest rising podcast in all of YouTube, baby. And don't you ever forget it. Make sure you watch everything else. We have got WrestleMania moments in a minute. We got three of them up this week. I tried to get more of them up, you guys, but WrestleMania week is just tough on everybody. I promise I'll try to get at least maybe one more up if you are looking forward to more, but they, I don't know if that's going to actually happen because we have got NXT TakeOver tomorrow night. We did the TakeOver preview and predictions. If you missed that, go watch it. It is live right now. We have got the reviews of the Raw and SmackDown Go Home Show. We have the unveiling of the North American Championship. We've got WrestleCrate unboxings. That Wrestling Club unboxings. We've got everything that a wrestling fan could possibly desire here on Sledgehammer TV. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the World Heavyweight Champion of Microphones, Blue the Snowball, and the Wrestling God of Thunder, Thor the Sledgehammer, on a show of gods, champions, and legends, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, right here on Sledgehammer TV. That is going to do it, and we are out of here, and we will see you for the NXT review and the WrestleMania review all weekend long, right here on Sledgehammer TV. TV. Shirts! <laughs>